Seizing the resources of a defeated enemy has been common practice since the beginning of recorded history, and almost certainly even long before that. The appropriation of assets from the Third Reich after the end of the Second World War in Europe, however, was one of the most unique and modern examples in history. The seized assets were not just base economic resources, such as money, gold, and other more common riches, but scientific resources and knowledge, both of which had become strategically important to national success as the 20th century progressed. Today, we're going to talk about how the West scooped up German scientists at the end of the war as part of Operation Paperclip. Shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes, covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Explore classes in everything from animation and graphic design to documentary making, cinematography, and more. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Our viewers often ask for advice on how to start a YouTube channel, and Skillshare is the best answer to this question. If you want to be on camera for your channel, Maddie Brown's low-budget filmmaking course is the place to start, while Susan Orlean's creative nonfiction, Write Truth With Style, will help you write killer scripts. We learned so much from these courses. Skillshare has a special offer for our viewers, as everyone signing up through our link will get the first two months of premium membership for free. Support our channel, learn from hundreds of professionals, and realize your dreams. Sign up to Skillshare via our URL, skl.sh slash the Cold War, or the link is in the description. The Second World War has been referred to by some as the first scientific war, with the use of such technological advancements as radar and jet engines, and eventually even the nuclear bomb, which proved decisive. Despite being eventually crushed by the weight of Allied armies and resources, Nazi Germany possessed technology which was reportedly superior to that of the Allied powers in many areas. The myth of the Wunderwaffe, or Wonder Weapons, was a chimeric favorite of Hitler, but in reality there was a hint of truth to their existence. And if the weapons existed, or were in development, that means that there were people with valuable knowledge, knowledge which could be exploited by whomever possessed it. As the Allied armies pushed into Germany during the final stages of the war, they were followed by more than 3,000 scientific and technical experts, agents of the Combined Intelligence Objectives Subcommittee, or CIOS. This was a joint British-American task force established in London during the summer of 1944, with a goal to investigate all things related to German science – radar, missiles, aircraft, medicine, bombs, fuses, chemical and biological weapons, and so on and so forth. However, they didn't act alone. Another technological recovery operation, also known as the ALSOS mission, often collaborated and even competed with CIOS to gain as much as it could from the defeated enemy nation. It was this group's agents which received a large pile of documents from a Polish lab technician at Bonn University, containing a classified list of the Third Reich's top scientists, known as the Ossenberg List. This text contained names, addresses, and other key details on Reich scientists, and was used to create a blacklist of names to be arrested. At the top of the list was Werner von Braun, but more about him later. In the aftermath of Germany's surrender, the Joint Intelligence Committee, or JIC, was keenly focused on confronting the emerging Soviet threat. To appraise the situation, its operatives wrote 16 major intelligence reports between June 15th and August 9th, 1945, the most important of them detailing the military capability and future intentions of the USSR. In short, it warned that Stalin's Soviet Union was an ideologically hostile entity which would continue to seek global domination. In October, JIC Intelligence Report 250-4 advised the Joint Chiefs of Staff that, quote, eight of ten leading German scientists in the field of guided missiles, unquote, had gone missing, probably seized by the Soviets. More disturbingly, two entire German physics institutes had been disassembled, transported, and reassembled in the USSR, a harbinger of, quote, intensive Soviet scientific research programs, unquote, 
underway across Russia at the time. It was this fear of losing out which prompted an intensification and systemization of U.S. attempts to appropriate German science, including its scientists. In late summer of 1945, a subdivision of JIC was created, the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, or JIOA. This new group quickly gained total control of a rapidly expanding Nazi scientist program called Operation Overcast, renamed Paperclip in November of 1945. From the moment JIOA took control, the employment of Germany's scientists was specifically and strategically aimed at achieving military supremacy over the Soviets before the latter could dominate the United States, setting them up in such areas of the United States as Wright Field, Ohio. The morality of employing potential war criminals was, for the most part, sidelined by the military establishment due to the perception of a ticking clock. It was determined, rightly or wrongly, that military supremacy needed to be attained by 1952 at the latest when it was predicted that the Soviets would have regained their full potential. So what were some of these German scientific and technical marvels that the Allies, and the Soviets for that matter, had cast their covetous eyes upon for acquisition? Let's begin with German rocketry and perhaps the most famous example of an Operation Paperclip scientist. The German V series of rockets, and in particular the V2 rocket, often considered a terror weapon, was an unprecedented device which no fighter aircraft is capable of shooting down, and which proved perfect for demoralizing enemy populations because of sheer helplessness. Advanced systems such as the V2 prompted Dwight D. Eisenhower to say the following, quote, It seemed likely that if the Germans had succeeded in perfecting and using these new weapons six months earlier than he did, our invasion of Europe would have proved exceedingly difficult, perhaps impossible." End quote. The man at the center of the V-2 rocket program was a prodigious German scientist named Werner von Braun. A man in his 30s at the end of the Second World War, he came from a wealthy aristocratic background. A group predominantly composed of rocket scientists, including von Braun himself, and General Walter Dornberger surrendered to the Americans on May 2, 1945. By this time, von Braun was already at the top of CIOS's blacklist for rocket research. Von Braun was confident his work was so important that he would never be harmed by the Americans. In his own words, he, quote, did not expect to be kicked in the teeth, as the V-2 was something we, the Germans, had, and you, the Americans, didn't. Naturally, you wanted to know all about it." End of quote. Despite his use of brutal slave labor to fulfill production targets for his work in Germany, there was no guilt or remorse about von Braun, and he seemed to act like a celebrity rather than a prisoner. Another field of interest was that of chemical weapons, in which American analysts quickly realized they were far behind Germany. Indeed, if the war had descended to full-scale chemical attacks, it would have been vastly one-sided in Germany's favor. In the summer of 1945, one Dr. Gerhard Schrader was captured by the Americans along with hundreds of other German chemists and brought to Kranzberg Castle in Hesse for interrogation. It turned out that he was the creator, albeit accidental, of a devastating new nerve gas known as Tabun the precursor of deadly gases such as the now infamous sarin variant. He had been working for an insecticide laboratory of IG Farben in Leverkusen, attempting to develop a pesticide to kill weevils and leaf lice. But after synthesizing a cyanide-containing fumigant codenamed Preparation 9-91, Schrader realized it was massively lethal and couldn't be used as a pesticide, much to his own sorrow. However, the Third Reich's Chemical Weapons Department saw a more destructive use for the new substance, and after a kilogram of it was produced for the German army, it was given the name Tabun. As Operation Paperclip progressed, the US quote-unquote imported an expert in Tabun synthesis named Dr. Friedrich Hoffmann. Hoffmann immediately began producing potential chemical weapons for the Americans. Interestingly, Hoffman was an anti-Nazi through the war and had been issued an affidavit confirming such. 
Moreover, his father had risked his life spying for the Americans. Highlighting the diverse range of personalities, from ardent war criminals to innocent, gifted scientists that Operation Paperclip targeted. So how did the Allies, specifically the United States, acquire Nazi data and even the scientists themselves? By the fall of 1944, the Allied powers had a solid foothold on the European continent. But it was events taking place in Washington, D.C., which would eventually initiate Operation Paperclip. Colonel Jervis William Trichel was made first chief of the newly created Rocket Branch inside U.S. Army Ordnance, putting together a group of scientists which would be sent to Europe as part of, quote, Special Mission V2. The United States and Trichel, knowing it was 20 years behind Germany in rocket development, saw an opportunity to close the gap swiftly and save the U.S. millions of research dollars in the process. This wasn't the only effort to secure German science for U.S. use, and many other departments of the military and intelligence services did similar things. It was generally believed among these circles that recruiting Nazi scientists was the lesser of two evils, as the Soviets would definitely try to get their hands on the Germans if they didn't. A prime example of this was Dr. Eugen Hagen, a virus expert specialized in creating vaccines, but also involved in the infamous human medical experiments of Hitler's doctors. After being captured by the Americans initially, the man fled to the Soviet-controlled zone after the war was done and worked for them. So rather unsurprisingly, not all elements of American society approved of the utilization of Nazi scientists. The operation came into public knowledge when the New York Times reported on Nazis living in America under a secret military program. That story, and others that followed, generated a flurry of condemnation among many interest groups and the general public. Journalist and foreign affairs correspondent Joachim Yosten, writing in The Nation, said provocatively, quote, If you enjoy mass murder, but also treasure your skin, be a scientist, son. It's the only way nowadays of getting away with murder." End quote. Clearly, strong words, and stronger condemnation. Prominent political figures in America also protested against the employment of German scientists. This included the wife of the late President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, who petitioned the U.S. government to suspend visas for all Germans for 12 years. As we know, however, these objections and condemnations did not really affect Operation Paperclip in any overly negative way. This was most clearly evidenced in the case of Werner von Braun. He was eventually to become the primary NASA architect behind the US space program's Saturn V vehicle, the key factor in getting to the moon, one of the most singularly remarkable achievements in American history. Rightly or wrongly, over 1,600 scientists were brought to the West and put to work by means of Operation Paperclip. Only one of those men was ever tried for crimes committed under the Nazi regime, but he was never found guilty. Paperclip remains one of the more controversial plans in the early Cold War, seeming to show just how great the threat of Soviet communism was perceived by those in power in the West, that they would almost immediately tie themselves to their former enemies to help confront their new foe. We here at the Cold War will continue to discuss the scientific programs developed from Paperclip and more in our future videos, so please make sure you're subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. We rely on our patrons to create these videos, so consider supporting us via www.patreon.com slash the Cold War. This is the Cold War channel, and we will catch you on the next one.